guys. Okay, we got cut off because I had a work call. I do have to work. <laughs> Besides, these readings are so long that I don't think it's a problem to break them up into two readings. All right. So we were talking about the dragonfly. Um, and I, I feel as though, well, we spoke about how we have to find a balance between our emotions and our thoughts. And it's about seeking change. I don't know if we got this. Looking at what's in front of you, looking at what's behind you, and then gain the perspective about where you're, where you're supposed to be going. So I think I might have said that. And I think that that was the end of this particular group reading, this particular reading. So at 48 minutes, or 48 seconds in, we come to our last... And which do we want? Okay, so we did the angelic messenger for that one. So we're going to do, and this is the acorn. From a little tiny seed, a mighty oak is born. Where is my acorn man? Where is my man of the forest? The one who is in love with nature and seeks spirituality and growth and recognizes the beauty in the simple things. See his little hat that he wears right there? Oh, wow. It's like a little beanie. Huh. All right. Message. Cinderella. All right. Let's try and do this, spirit. Let's guide me in a way that we can keep this message non-dramatic. <laughs> now, we do want to get warnings when we need them. But let's just keep this on high note as possible, is my intention. So she's holding up a clock. Well, we all know the story of Cinderella. So I'm thinking she might be thinking time is running out, right? Because remember, she was going to turn back into a girl wearing rags at the, at the witching hour, right? At 12 o'clock. That was when everything good was going to fall away from her. And... She's paranoid, thinking, I gotta run, I gotta run. He's gonna find out who I really am, who I truly am. And it is about magic. So, she had that beautiful transformation. The pumpkin was her carriage, the mice were her footmen, and all of a sudden at 12 o'clock it all goes away. So she got a glimpse, however, of what life could be for her. She had lived that, you know, after her father died and she had to live with her rotten stepmother who gave everything to her sisters and basically made her a little servant. Think about that. That actually happens in this world today. It does. You're the worker and there's nobody there to protect you. It's sad. But she got a glimpse of what life could be for her on the outside. So this is something that she wasn't allowed to look at. So you might be in a place where you have been held back or certain things expected of you that weren't your, your choice, another's choice. But you got out and you, and you got a glimpse of something that was different than you had experienced. She got to get out of whatever her family boundaries were in that one night, and it changed her life. And she knows that, God, I gotta go back to that place. So she's looking at that clock, knowing the world's gonna change at that time. But it's also talking to you about the ability to shapeshift and transfer between worlds that might have been forbidden to you. You now have seen the other way, the way other people are able to live, and they can't erase that from your mind. You now saw, just like she did. And now the hour's here for you too. It's a time for the glamour and the mystery and the wonderful magic and then there's also a time for the, for the mundane, right? The regular. But there's still hope in front of you. Because 
that's not the end of the story of this little girl, right? She did spend most of her time in front of that fireplace in rags, working for other people. But there was a knock at her door because someone loved her, fell in love with her. And soon there's going to be a knock at your door. Proof that it's your time to step out from the shadows and from whatever cruelty has held you back in your life that's told you that you're not good enough to dream for what you dare dream of. And no matter how many times people try to take your place or kick you out of where you rightfully meant to be, this is your destiny. Speaks of, there are sacred times and they do hold magic, spiritual magic, good magic, transformative, beautiful magic. When you can make your wishes and that they will come true for you, just that, as they did for spirit, for spirit, for Cinderella, because you're working with spirit. Your good deed does not go unpunished. Think about it. This person gave of themselves. This was a decent, good, loving person that was abused. Do you think spirit forgets that? You put, your, you, you put your wishes out there. You hold on to your dreams. And the time that you use, use it wisely. Trust that when you do so, the outcome's going to be good. This is about rebirth. This is about one life ends and another one begins. This is about the phoenix rising from the ashes. This is about being truthful and clear. This is telling you that the right person is coming for you. I have going across my mind, there's been a family that's patriarch of the family or the matriarch, I don't know who it is, is pretty much ruled. And this one has been under their thumb, like, like this one under their stepmother. Maybe it was a stepmother or stepfather, I don't know. And you could be in a family that so much is expected of you, but and they've kept you under their thumb. They've squashed your dreams. You did get a glimpse. You did meet someone. You did know what you could have had. You f it felt right, it felt good, but it wasn't allowed for you. They controlled you. Maybe someone's gonna die, a family member, a controlling, abusive family member, and you will have your freedom. Or maybe Spirit's going to show you the way to walk out the door. Remember the moose came out the other day on the amethyst geode. And the moose says that you know your own authority. You know what's in your highest good. The moose is strong and they stand tall. And they have a very large psychic antennae. So this is talking about strong self-esteem. Now remember I told you when we were in Banff, you watch the, I don't know if you guys have ever seen, but if you watch the moose, they are awkward. They've got these long spindly legs and these giant heads. It, it's kind of like the hummingbird, how they're so aerodynamically incorrectly built, just like the bee. They shouldn't be able to fly, but not only can they fly, they're masters. They're, they do acrobats in the air. They can stand still and go backwards and up and down like a helicopter, right? And so the moose, looking at the giant, giant big upper body and these huge, huge antlers on these long skinny legs, but when they move, they move very gracefully. This is about being grounded their legs are so long that they can go in the water quite deep. They can cross water that's quite deep because of these long, long legs. So they're being grounded on the earth as well as in their emotional waters, which is where their intuition lies. So Spirit's asking you to learn how to go back into that, the depth of your emotional waters, connect to your intuition so that you can become stronger.
that felt to me like a very fast message. So I'm being asked to give another. And this is inner authority. And it goes, it's interesting because it was the, was the card that I pulled away. Remember I said, I'm only going to do one card for each and then I'm going to pull one away. This was the one that was with this. And how interesting that they are both about knowing your inner authority. The number 14 is the number temperance, which is balance. And this is a, in, in, in a card of part, partnership as far as partnership in the world. This is about you reconsidering as the moose asked you to do, right? You're gonna go back into your emotional waters and connect your intuition to your spiritual place and, and they want you to reconsider your feelings about yourself, your opinion of yourself, like Cinderella who was told what her life was supposed to be. You're not gonna go to the ball. He's not gonna look at you. Why would he look at you? You're just a, a Cinderella. When people hear something for so long, they begin to believe it. So we can undo that by telling ourselves the opposite and believe, until we believe that too. It might be that you feel that others disregard you and your feelings and your needs. They override what's important to you. They don't value you and they don't see the effort that you put in. And you might feel overshadowed by people who are in a higher position or a position of authority. You, you so want to be connected back to your true self and to your true nature. You don't want the shallow that they seem to have. You want a deep, healthy purpose in life. So this is encouraging you to nurture your inner authority so that you can move into more meaningful, fulfilling relationships. The inner authority it's not in what you say. It comes from within. When you choose to speak of lo from love, out of commitment, out of determination, you are guiding the forces of the universe in harmony towards a purpose that's pure and true. This is when you Take your own intuition and you go in towards it and you hand it to spirit. What I get, what I feel. Spirit wants to work with us. We don't need to ask permission in order to love ourselves because that is naturally within us all. Someone may not be loving you or treating you with respect, but that doesn't mean that you can't do that for yourself. So once you start recognizing the importance of loving yourself, then the outward Validation from others, you don't care. You don't need to seek permission from other people or approval. Then you start listening truly what your inner voice is telling you. You caught a glimpse of the real world that you wanted to be a part of? Who says you can't have that? Them? You have the authority to create and sustain lasting relationships and true community of, of soul family. That's based on your own willingness and ability to open yourself up to what spirit wants to develop within you, your own spiritual growth. And you're honoring yourself and others. A lot of people, they don't, ha they don't have that, that inner authority that's developed. It's underdeveloped because they lack commitment to their own lives and to their own purpose and to their own soul. When you truthfully connect to your inner self, it isn't about material success. It comes from perseverance with the belief that you have something beautiful that's worth struggling for to uncover something fantastic. Spirit, we, we came here on a mission. You didn't come to be somebody else's Cinderella and to do what other people asked you to do and, and live a, a life that you're, you're wanting so badly to reach for something that you caught a glimpse of. So when you look at that flower, this is the, the color of sexual 
creative energy. Sexual, a sacral chakra. That's passion. And look at the center, color of the, the solar plexus. I am worthy. I am capable. So take a long, hard look at your future. The one you wish to create and realize it's not going to be super simple. No, it isn't. Nothing ever is. It's not all good and it's not all bad. There's a blend of all of it. And you're never going to be free of, of, of obstacles and issues that you need to resolve. But you need to start to create at least one, one step at a time your own life and what you want. And know that, yes, tomorrow's going to have its own issues. Right? Today I decided to read in a different way. I decided to cut off the tarot. And I don't mean that I'm not going to... Um, use my decks. There, there's things that I can use, but my focus is on the positive. I don't want to focus on the drama. I, I, and I'm cutting off all of the lines to all those other energetic people that are not in my highest good. I'm doing things a little differently. I'm learning as I go and I'm altering and shifting and I, this is what we're meant to do. So we're supposed to take a step today towards bringing towards you a spirituality that brings you love and awareness and growth even though we have sorrow and loss, we also have joy and gratitude. We want to plant seeds in the light, in the light, not in the shadows. And we want to start placing a little bit more, or possibly in, in, in some people's case, a lot more emphasis on your own inner authority and less on others because they sidetrack us, right? I got sidetracked with all the drama. That slowed my process of joy. It was not making me happy. If something's not making you happy, you've got to look at why is that and what do I do to change it? Let's create the future of our own life the way we want it. At 1717, that's the end of this message. I want to look for us at 1717. And then there is another message we're just going to get for the collective. 17. The angels applaud you for staying positive and optimistic. They say that your optimism is warranted as your affirmative thoughts are coming true. Keep up the good work as you're on the right path. So, as I said, people can be groomed from, from a young child to believe what, they're, what people have said about them or to them. But now that's the time for us to start playing our own tune, singing our own song, and bring in what it is that we wish. The cougar is what we had come forward the other day, but here we have the lion, which was interesting because we're not being shown the male lion, we're being shown the female lion, the lioness. And when I looked at her, I saw the cougar. But it's the feminine energy the power of self and leadership. We don't have to use the, the, the aggressive bullying tactics that mankind has used for centuries to rule this planet. The goddess energy is, in, is, is taking over this planet because it's the love movement. That's why with the readings, the way they were going, they were so combative. I don't like that. I wanted it to be this. You don't have to be a combative, remember? Nasty, uh, acidic, toxic mother voice. You want to have a loving, powerful leadership voice. Self-empowering. Empowering, empowering the, the lives of others around you. Encouraging people to be the all that they can be. Stepping into your own personal power of self. Balance. This is a big cat that knows balance. And it doesn't get it without practice. It knows that we need both gentleness and great strength and power. We were being shown the female lion here, not the male, not the masculine. The divine feminine, but the divine feminine won't hesitate to leap at an opportunity or defend itself or its loved ones. I told you, I might be little, but I'm mighty. You come after people I love, I'll rip you to shreds. That's a fact. You, you must protect yourself. Even though you're a kind, gentle, loving being, that is very powerful. But don't hesitate to defend yourself. 
And don't, don't hold yourself back and not go after what you have dreamed of. Because someone told you that you couldn't. It's to the point where you have believed it. We need to take responsibility for yes, keeping the peace within our lives, absolutely. But we keep the peace in our lives also by not allowing ourselves to be bullied. How is that peaceful if someone else is bullying you, controlling you? When you aren't able to speak up for yourself, that's not peace. You need to know the truth, live the truth. Balance, it's all about balance. It's time for you to learn your own song and play it out loud so other people can hear it too. This is about boundaries. Mountain lions, you don't, you don't hear the, the, the mountain lion. You don't hear them and you don't see them very rarely. They don't wanna go out and attack people, but they will defend. The mountain lion totem told you when I came to Sedona when I when I got there from Wisconsin that is who came to me that was the power animal that came to me the cougar but the mount it's the same it's the mountain lion right the cougar mountain lion totem um and it is about knowing your own personal power and stepping into your own personal power and that doesn't mean that you have to be a bully it doesn't mean that you have to be aggressive and 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 uh it's about Embracing your own energy and vitality. They connect with the sun where they live, right? You think of the sun, that's divine masculine within us all. So she has it too. The lessons of the mountain lion, they can be difficult to work with that. But when you learn the lessons and you get it under control, because we're taught that we want to have that loving, nurturing energy, right? Tone it down. Don't be so abrasive. Don't be so aggressive. And yet you don't want to be a doormat. You go, you, you, you go one way and then you go too far the other way. So they're, they're known as the cougar, the puma, the Florida panther. Think about it. The panther is one of my animal messengers main animal messengers, the black panther, and there really isn't actually a black panther, it's, it's a leopard, jaguar, but they call it a panther. So when you are one of these as your animal totem, you're often put into positions where you're a target for the problems of other people, <laughs> which is my business, right, and Cinderella. They are insecure, so then it justifies them blaming you because things have gone wrong. So that you'll take charge of things that they're not gonna take charge of. You're the leader. And because that leadership quality, then they try and knock you off your, off your mountain. Well, what are you doing up on that high horse? It's like, you know, you can't win. So it's about learning to lead without insisting that others follow you. It's about, like I said, be the light. They're beautiful, they're graceful. If you see them, they're oh, the power that just emanates from them. They also don't waste anything. They will take an entire carcass up into a tree. They save it, they'll bury it. They take what they need and they don't waste it. They take what they need for survival, which means go light, travel light. So lead where your heart tells you to go. Lead with the spirit of your own convictions. Stand in your own integrity. And if other people want to follow your lead, that's great. But don't let them deter your choice about where you want to go. There's, when you think about the female or the cougar, or the, the, they have cubs, right? That look up to them, babies that follow them, young ones. Maybe you're already leading people. Maybe it's time for you to push some of them out of their little cave. Now, if you're the king of the mountain, that can help be a problem too, right? You can't keep everybody happy. But if you are keeping yourself happy and keeping, and you're in a place of peace, that's what is required of you. Your first responsibility is to you, always to tell the truth, 
and, and live by the truth. The, I want to speak for the cougar spirit animal because it's of the same family. This mountain lion is, is called the cougar as well, and that was who came to me. She's so beautiful. She's so capable. Stands behind her convictions. They're very clever. As a, as a cougar person, you, you know balance. You're responsible. You're dependable. You're a spiritual warrior. You have the gift of clairvoyance. Absolutely. You are connected. You have a sensuality about you that just, that people are drawn to you. You can be very cunning. But what you need to learn is freedom from guilt. That seems to be a huge issue, is, is people guilt tripping you, inviting you on a guilt trip. I'm not going on guilt trips anymore. I've had enough of them in my life, thanks. I've spent, my, I spent many, many years of my life going on guilt trips that I didn't have any, any proper or suitable attire to attend. The cougar comes out in the shadows, dusk and dawn. She brings you strength and courage and instinct, that sensual mystery. This is a really good animal messenger for women and also for people who are trying to connect to their feminine energy. That's why I said this is who she came to me when I got to Sedona. They want you to balance the instincts that you get, the cat instincts, with wisdom and patience. They want you to be the observer. Save your energy and only act when the time is right. Pay attention to any emotional upheavals or the clash of energies between others. And keep yourself in a place of serenity. Try and remain fair, balance. It's always about balance. You're clearly a natural leader if this is one of your total messengers. So balance is very important. For your power knowing when to be gentle knowing when to assert yourself not in a place of ego right you know how to set boundaries and if somebody disrespects those boundaries you are clear you speak and when you're happy everyone can see it it's visible you can feel it but when you're not you will roar <laughs> you know how to be seen and not seen you are very good at camouflage So if you need any of this, you call upon the, the power and the wisdom of the cougar. Boundaries are big right now. A lot of people invading others' boundaries. Also for us, we need to know where our boundaries end and another's begin so we don't cross over. Remember, lead by example, not by pushing. And men, do well to call upon the spirit of the cougar. You may be a very gentle, loving, giving, empathetic man. People, people work on that. They use it, they work it, and they milk it, and, and pretty soon your life is their life and you don't have a life at all. Don't allow that to happen. Recognize that you can be gentle but you can also roar and you can set the boundaries and say, this is enough. I'm done. Done with this. I have a life too. And this is not what I chose for my life. I didn't choose to be Cinderella. Look at the colors. Which choice do you want? Okay, you guys, that's it. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to upload this now. I love you.